This is Sheldon Amah at Chicago Ken College of Law, and I want to provide a bit of an introduction to equal protection analysis and what is called, what are called levels of scrutiny. Uh, when government classifies on the basis of uh, different considerations, uh, basis of activities, basis of business, basis of uh, uh, groups that uh, people belong to, uh, we are in an equal protection world. And when we are in an equal protection world, the question arises is whether the particular classification the government uses is constitutional under the Equal Protection Clause. There are three, perhaps four, uh, categories of equal protection analysis or levels of scrutiny. The first is what we would call uh, strict scrutiny, which applies to so-called suspect classifications. Racial classifications, classifications based on uh, ethnic origin and the like. When we talk about strict scrutiny, we are talking about placing a very heavy burden of justification on government. Uh, so that governments have to show that their classification is based upon a compelling governmental interest, and even if it is, the second inquiry is whether it is narrowly tailored to achieve the governmental purpose. That's strict scrutiny, the highest level of scrutiny in the equal protection world. The second level is something below that called, not surprisingly, intermediate level scrutiny, and that applies to sex-based classifications, whether directed at women or at men. Here, there is still a uh, fairly heavy burden of justification on government, but it's less than that under strict scrutiny. So that here, the government has to show that there is an important governmental interest at stake and that the means used, the classification, is substantially related to that important governmental interest. The third uh, category of equal protection analysis is what's called rational basis review. Whenever there is no good reason to view a classification with any kind of suspicion, as for example with strict scrutiny uh, or with intermediate level scrutiny, we use rational basis review. Very deferential indeed, typically applies in situations involving business matters, economic regulation, and uh, the like. There is probably a fourth category of equal protection scrutiny uh, analysis, and that is uh, actual purpose review, where uh, if we were to use rational basis review, we could perhaps conclude that the governmental classification was rational on this, that, or the other ground, but when we inquire into what is really going on, what the actual purpose is, if it turns out that the actual purpose is to single out for disadvantageous treatment a particular group of people because of who they are, that would violate the Equal Protection Clause under actual purpose review. Good examples, Romer v. Evans, handed down by the Supreme Court years ago, which involved discrimination uh, against homosexuals just because of who they were. And similarly, the case that is currently one of the two cases, one of the two same-sex marriage cases currently before the Supreme Court, uh, the Perry case in which the Ninth Circuit used actual purpose review based upon uh, Romer. Uh, interestingly enough, and this is my final point, uh, with respect to the second of the two cases before the Supreme Court, the Windsor case, the Second Circuit used intermediate level scrutiny for sexual orientation uh, discrimination. And that is something that the Supreme Court has not yet done, and we'll see whether it does it in either or both of these cases.